Let's be to Harry Phibbs, local government editor at Conservative Home, former councillor for Hammersmith and Fulham as well. Harry, good afternoon to you. Good afternoon. I mean, that is the point, isn't it? It's like we can argue, you know, what, what is reasonable, what is a perk, as Jonathan Reynolds seems to think. It's not a perk, it's part of the job. I mean, it's a, a nonsense phrase. But th the fact that these people moaned so hard in opposition when they got a mere sniff that the Tories might be doing the same thing uh, brings a whole new kind of moon into this discussion. Yes, I think that's spot on, and that's why it's... Uh, indefensible, and, and as you were saying, why the Labour, not just Labour backbenchers, but but ministers who have been pushed out to defend it, have, 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 of course they've been completely uncomfortable with it. I mean, with with Boris Johnson, I think it's perfectly reasonable to say that that he had uh, character flaws and that he would be rather rather louche, rather cavalier about about the rules. But he never pretended to be a saint. He never pretended to be sort of pious and. And sanctimonious. True. And the difficulty is with Keir Starmer was 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 going into overload on, on all that. And then with um, Rishi Sunak again. I mean, the, 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 the attack then changed about Rishi Sunak being rich. Well, Rishi Sunak never pretended uh, you know, to be anything other than other than rich. Although he obviously talked about having a you know relatively ordinary um, yeah. upbringing in in Southampton. But the message there was that the Tories are rich and they don't understand about the pressure of paying the rent or getting a mortgage Correct. or paying the energy bill or whatever it is. Yeah. We Labour MPs, we're regular chaps, we understand about all this. And they're getting on these very high salaries, then then, um, then saying, oh yes, I want freebie clothes, freebie clothes for my wife, freebie glasses, freebie uh, yeah. football tickets. Uh, uh, and it's absolutely brazen. I mean, you I mean, would feel... The shamelessness. Yeah, the Starmers would surely feel embarrassed on a walkabout, thinking, here I am again with my designer clobber paid for by a multi-millionaire businessman you know he's not broken any rules by donating it you do wonder what the hell he wants back from it let's have a listen harry to jonathan reynolds the business secretary quivering on the breakfast show this morning here's what he said i would just like to say i think there can be no comparison drawn between the kind of you know corruption in the awarding of covid contracts that we were talking about under the last government where we had to appoint a commissioner given so much money has gone to donors like this is absolutely no you know, equivalence between that and someone transparently supporting. So that's his defence, Harry, uh, that the Tories did worse things. Well, I think he's right that there's no equivalence. I mean, as far as the COVID contracts is concerned, that, so far as, as far as I can gather, if, if you had if you had a company offering to uh, provide kit during the during the pandemic, then then civil servants still had to sign off on it but they they fast tracked the whole thing and it and it may well have been that, that there was there was bad value for money and that should be properly investigated i don't think there's any suggestion that any any tory uh, politicians got got uh, any financial gain correct. Out of, um, correct any any of the covid contracts. so uh, not, not in quite the way he meant it but, but there is and by the way i don't think that the the boris johnson getting a donor to pay for some rather smart wallpaper in the dining street flat is 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 as bad either because you know it's his private it was his private quarters in downing street but there would still be uh inevitably the prime minister would still have meetings there and to say well it should look rather rather smart it's a good idea mm. should you get the taxpayer to pay for very expensive lu uh, luxury wallpaper that there, there'd be some pushback over that so you get a donor to it. no i think it's i think that is rather more defensible frankly than than, than some of the things that keir starm has been involved with yeah it's extraordinary and I, I wonder now whether there's i mean there's going to be a meeting somewhere isn't there someone's having a meeting at number 10 saying no more freebies surely no, in, the, in the moment, they be, maybe it's maybe it's the arrogance of getting this huge landslide majority, uh, or, or, or maybe it's maybe the sanctimonious. Maybe he believes his own propaganda that he he starts off thinking what a what we you know what a uh, morally superior person he is, and mm. therefore therefore it, 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 anything anything he does is is absolutely okay because he's one of the good guys and the other people are the bad guys, and therefore he doesn't he doesn't need, need to sort of pause to. Forced to reflect on, on on some of these things. I don't know. Could be that. Let's move to that other story. Uh, we broke this one yesterday. Sue Gray, Chief of Staff at uh, Starmer Towers, of course, paid more than Keir himself, uh, which, it, I mean, that on its own is quite an interesting headline. Um, let's have a listen, though. Back in August of Mr Starmer being pressed on Sue Gray's position within the Labour Party. And just on Sue Gray, on her position, uh, Casement, has apparently been causing divisions. Can you offer some clarity on that? Yeah, that's complete nonsense. Uh, so I hope that's clear enough. 
There it is. It's complete nonsense. She wields no power at all, it seems, Harry, according to Mr Starmer. Well, they're obviously I mean, the, the two sides to the, to the uh, just come, come in a couple of angles to this. On the one is the, the question of her being given this um, uh, uh, big big pay rise and the double standards and that you know re reflects up the, the discussion we just had about all the all, all the freebies, doesn't it? That they come in and give her this, this this big pay rise. And bear in mind that she's now a special advisor. She was a civil servant, and it went, we can we can probably guess that she was always uh, a pretty strong. Labour supporter, and then and she had that that mm. political baggage when she was investigating Boris Johnson and so on. But now her her, her role is supposedly as a as a special advisor rather than a um, a civil servant, and she's paid a lot more than the other special advisors. And that's the other aspect of this is 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 the uh, is the fighting like ferrets in a sack because of the resentment that some of the other special advisors who aren't paid as much um, have towards her her, her her sort of swanning in and. Um, mm. And, and, and bossing them around. So clearly, there's disunity. Otherwise, we wouldn't be reading about this. This is this has obviously been leaked because because of um, resentment towards her getting this big pay increase and resentment towards the the way that she's behaving. So there's 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 a power struggle. It's you know this isn't new in politics, but it didn't. I mean, this this was a pretty short honeymoon, wasn't it, for the whole thing to be disintegrating? Just a, yeah, you know. And I, I guess you're absolutely right. I, I, I still find it very odd, and I've always found this odd, Harry. It's not not just this story, but you know, permanent secretaries who earn more than the prime minister. That in itself, many people would go, really, you wouldn't surely nobody would earn more than the prime minister. You might think. Yes, I mean, I think it's. Uh, uh, I mean, obviously, people argue that that that, that uh, it's, it's good if a, if a prime minister is highly paid to try and attract people. To the job, you know, and get get out, get out your violin or whatever. I mean, obviously they 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 get a lot of money once they stand down. They, you know, they write their memoirs, they go on lecture uh, circuit. They, you know, they've got they've got a free uh, flat in Downing Street, a free um, country house check. I mean, I don't I I, I don't I don't think that uh, it's 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 an unreasonable. Um, Level of, of of salary for the for the prime minister, and I think it's. And I think no, it, no, I, it, I think for the prime minister, it's reasonable. I think just you know those around him to earn more just seems to many to be a little bit odd. Um, we're going to talk yeah, some more. I think, it, I think, Go on, I think Harry. It is, why should they be any more? I mean, they, I think, you know, the idea that they the idea that they would be such brilliant businessmen and they'd be able to do so brilliantly well in the. And yeah. in the private said, "Well, I mean, you know, let's see. Sue Gray can go and off and start a business and see how many." Well, they, yes, I, I always think. You know, I think most of these people will be completely unemployable. It's a, it's always that sort of line is wheeled out, isn't it? Well, you have to pay, otherwise they go elsewhere. And I think, where would Sue Gray, a professional civil servant, in Thailand, where would she go? For God's sake, uh, I shudder to think. Stay with us, Harry. We've got more stories on the way. The work from home story not going away. Sadiq Khan back in the news 